Hello, my name is Rian Smith and I'm Head of Operations at the London Deanery. I'm here today to talk to you about the operations team who look after your training. So we're responsible for recruiting GP specialty trainees and also for the upkeep of your training. During your training, the London Deanery is not your employer, but your training provider. Your employer will be either the NHS Trust that you're working for or your GP practice. Some programmes will involve more than one employer, so you may have a series of contracts of employment throughout your training. All matters relating to employment issues must be dealt with by your employer. This includes salary, pensions, annual leave and study leave. All matters relating to training are dealt with by the deanery in line with the goal guide and the first instance you should contact your operations officer. You must inform us of anything that may either directly or indirectly affect your training. This includes changes to your working arrangements, changes to the posts that you're undertaking, changes to your trainer or educational supervisor, changes to your personal details, updated contact details, updated immigration documentation, any time you have out of training, for example, sick leave, if you wish to transfer schemes or if you wish to transfer deaneries, if you wish to take any approved time out of training, if you have any problems during your posts or if you wish to resign from your post, you should also contact us. Certification. So as you're aware, you've been recruited into either a three or a four year programme. It's the expectation of the Royal College and the Deanery that you complete this programme in its entirety. You will not be able to gain your certification any earlier than your agreed certification date. Your certificate may only be granted if you have completed the minimum time requirements. Any time out of your programme is required to be made up, and this includes periods of statutory leave such as ill health, maternity, paternity and parental leave. You are allowed up to a maximum of one week per six month posts out of training. Any absence over and above this is likely to require an extension to training. In addition, if you have a period of over 12 months out of training, you will also be required to have an additional three month extension to your training to meet the Royal College requirements. Transferring areas. As per the Gold Guide, trainees are able to apply to transfer from the area in which they're currently working. This could be within the deanery, and that's an intra-deanery transfer, or it could be to another deanery, and that's an inter-deanery transfer. You must have been in post for a minimum of 12 months before a transfer will be able to take place. A transfer request must be based on well-founded personal reasons. Your application will then be assessed and ranked against those of your peers. Transfers will then be offered to trainees based on those with a determined need for being placed first. Transfers are not an entitlement and you must be aware that not all transfer applications will be successful. This is dependent on training opportunities and funding in your desired area. The medical performance list is an important part of your training. All GP trainees must be registered on the primary medical performance list with the local PCT of the practice where you're undertaking your GP post or your ITP. Inclusion on the primary medical performance list can take over eight weeks and inclusion on the list is subject to enhanced CRB checks. This can take up to 12 weeks to complete. If you have applied to join the performance list in advance of the date when you are due to start within the practice, you are allowed to work as a GP trainee for up to eight weeks to allow the paperwork to be completed. If you leave making your application too late, this exception will not apply to you and you will therefore be unable to start training, resulting in an unpaid break. If you are not included on the performance list within these eight weeks, then the PCT are able to suspend you unpaid from duties until such time as you are on the list. We will be at the induction and be able to answer any questions that you do have, so please think about any questions relating to the administration of your training. Thank you.